welcome to this presentation of the Rotary Club of North Bethesda, Maryland, USA. Our club was established in 1974. We meet every Friday morning at 7.45 a.m. and we often invite guest speakers to give presentations on all kinds of interesting subjects. Please contact us through our website at nbrotary.org. And thanks for watching. Our speaker today is John Burkhart. He will share with us his passion for kite flying in his talk, A History of Kites. John will be introduced by North Bethesda Rotary Club member, Linda Bergcross. Um, it's my pleasure today to introduce John. Uh, I, it's, it's seemed we all had an interest in kites, so I was so happy he was he's willing to speak to us. Uh, with a master's degree in city planning from MIT, Mr. Burkhardt had many years has many years of ex professional experience in transportation, survey research, program evaluation, planning, and technical assistance. He was formerly the president of Echosymmetrics Incorporated, and later a senior study director at Westat. He's noted for having been a pioneer in transportation services for persons with special needs, including customers of medical transportation services, older persons, persons with disabilities, and persons living in rural and small urban areas. He now spends much of his time in kite design, kite festivals, and kite organizations, a very gentle form of transportation, I might say. Since 1980, he has won top awards in the U.S. and abroad at many festivals, including AKA's Grand National Kite Making Championship in 1984 and 2015. And the 2015 award was made cooperatively to both he and his wife. He's actively engaged in spreading the joy of kite flying to others. He has been the event coordinator and head judge at many kite festivals and competition. And he's the chief author of many of the AKA's rules and regulations for kite makers competitions. Uh, he's written articles and had publications and has appeared in American Kite, Kite Lines, Martha Stewart Living and Washington Post, and of course, NPR. In 2008, he assisted the Smithsonian Institution and in Ball State in developing web-based instructional curriculum on kites for elementary school children. And in 2018, uh, some of us might remember this, he helped curate uh, and create a major cake display in the Strathmore Mansion in Bethesda. So I introduce John and I'm sure we'll all find this illuminating and enjoyable. So John, you can click the share screen and see how you do getting us off. Uh, go ahead. Okay, we've done that. Yeah. All right. And then shall I click on my Yeah, you click on, uh, click on your share screen. Yeah. Is yeah. the PowerPoint open? Sure. We okay. got it. There it is. There it is. And then up on top, you'll see slideshow. Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, A sl slideshow. From yeah. current slide, from, from the beginning, all the way on the far right. Mm -hmm. There you go. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Linda, and are learning and, at the same time. Yeah. yeah, and and everybody else. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. It's it's great to share uh, my love and and the joy that that I find in kites. It's uh, taken me all over the world, and uh, I've met some some really really wonderful people. Um, so let's uh, <laughs> let's let's do it. Uh, extraordinary opportunities in, in kite flying and in the kite community. I, I would not have believed it. Uh, you know, all, all of the, the wonderful things that, that have happened to me. Uh, I'm particularly interested in, in the artistic end of kite flying and, and we divided into visual art and performance art. I'll, I'll talk more about that. 
uh, has, has introduced me to absolutely wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, you can make it what, what you want to make it. And, and so all of these ways, uh, you know, sharing with your family, uh, playing with Mother Nature, um, she always wins. Uh, the lots of lots of good times in in kite flying. We should say what it is, uh, be, because uh, understanding some some very basic things. The the technical term is tethered aerodyne, and what that means is something that flies, uh, and it is controlled uh, by a line or line. It it uses wind force to overcome its own weight. And, and that's, I, I think, a key element. Uh, kites depend on attitude. Now, what we mean by attitude is, is the, the way that it faces into the wind and, and the angle that it faces into the wind. And then, of course, stability. If the wind changes a little bit, you want your kite to keep on flying. A little bit of history. I'm going to talk more about art than, than history, but um, we are unable to, to say when or where uh, kites started with, with any uh, real precision. You know, we're, we're talking about 2,000 or 3,000 years ago. Uh, the Chinese and, and the Polynesians, I, I think, have the best claim to be the first kite flyers. Uh, they, they had all sorts of reasons to do it. And in Polynesia, the idea was fishing, catching fish. Uh, but some of the records, there, there is written records of a Chinese general using kites uh, to spy on and to scare uh, other people in a war in uh, 200 BC. Uh, kites went around the world. Uh, they didn't really get noticed uh, in Europe until the 16th century. Uh, Giovanna della Porta uh, was the first one to write about them and 1558, and he did a real expansion of that in 1589. Uh, but throughout history, we've, we've got really an incredible variety of what kites have been used for. And so here's a, here's a really quick uh, alphabetical look at true or false. Uh, you've got 14 different possibilities uh, ranging from photography to building bridges to indoor ballet, uh, powering ships, religious ceremonies, testing airplanes, tra tracking troop movements. Here's your answer. The only one of these that has not happened is there has not been a competition at the Olympics. Uh, but there could be uh, in particularly the, the part of kite flying that, that I refer to as performance art. So that's the only one. Uh, not your father's kite, not your grandfather's kite. Uh, my, I had a grandfather who was into building kites. Uh, my father wasn't. But uh, the, the difference between old and new, uh, when, when it comes down to a, a huge difference from old and new, what's really there is, is that the kites we are building and using today are, are going to last a long, long time. What we're doing is using ripstop nylon, and that, that's basically spinnaker cloth. Uh, you have probably seen some ripstop nylon applications and ski jackets and things like that. Uh, but, but ripstop nylon is weaves that go in both directions, like, like a square. And what it means is if you get a hole, it's not going to go any farther. So uh, ripstop nylon is, is very light. 
very strong. And what we are using is the fiberglass and graphite structural rods. Uh, some of them like arrow shafts, uh, some of them like uh, golf club shafts. And that's all very strong, varying degrees of flexibility and all that. And, and so it's, it's different. And, and now using ripstop nylon, you, you can even print photographs and uh, pictures and things like that. Um, for me, what I find interesting is applique, which is sewing and, and cutting away. So that's what we use for our visual design. In the modern world, uh, kites, I'd, I'd like to introduce you to uh, kite families and tell you a little bit about how I got started in, in kites and, and <laughs> what some of the real pleasures are. So uh, kite families, we use these particularly in our uh, competitions uh, because different kinds of kites fly differently. And, and that's, that's a key point in, in competition. Uh, they, they also look uh, quite differently. So they're multi-line kites, they're individual kites, they're kites that are joined together uh, and, and uh, all of these different varieties. So first of all, uh, sport kites, uh, multi-line kites can uh, provide a, a lot of power and, and a lot of acrobatics. Uh, th this is a four-line kite. Uh, the, the Revolution Kite Company uh, holds many patents, and they're serious about enforcing their patents. But a, but a kite like this can spin around this axis, go straight up, straight over, straight down, make any sort of design in the sky that, that you would like to see. And it's particularly interesting when you get a group of people together doing this in and out, crossing lines, uncrossing lines, and providing an aerial ballet. And, and this is what I consider performance art. And it's often done to music and I will tell you, I have seen displays that give a lump in my throat. They're, they're really, really ballet performances. Related to this is the power kites. And you've probably seen some of this, uh, big foil kites that, that uh, can pull a buggy like this and they can get pretty close to 60 miles an hour. Uh, people have a lot of fun doing this. Uh, what's famous these days is kite surfing and it, it can be a, a real challenge, but here again for athletes and <laughs> acrobatics, it's, it's a great way to have fun. Okay. Uh, more kite families, flat kites. Well, we, we had a physicist who said there's no such thing as a truly flat kite. But basically, if you take a kite like this uh, and you lay it on the ground, it's flat when it's in the ground. When it's in the air, it starts to curve a little bit. Uh, flat kites are terribly unstable. And so they need long tails. Um, this particular kite was the uh, American Kite Flyers Association uh, Grand National Champion. The last time we had a uh, convention, uh, which was before COVID. Bowed kites, um, it's exactly what it says. It, it uses a line like this or it uses structure to uh, make a bow in the kite. And when you lay it on the ground, it's not flat. 
this particular kite is all sewn. It's all appliqued, uh, different colors placed on another color. Uh, I shudder <laughs> to think how many hours that took. Uh, this is a kite that I made. It's eight feet tall, and you might recognize this as a William Blake painting uh, from uh, 1790s, maybe 1796. It's called The Ancient of Days, and it seems like it's a photo of uh, God creating the earth. Different kinds of bowed kites, um, you know, they, they can be most anything and have all sorts of uh, aesthetic designs. This is a, a Japanese style kite called Shuruga. It has the bowing line on the top and uh, it's, it's an interesting kite to fly. And then uh, these are figure kites. You, you can make uh, lots of different representations of birds and animals and people and uh, houses and trains and, and all sorts of things. Uh, I a question on that. Are these, are these all controlled by one string? Mm. Uh, these are, yes. We, we started out with the multi-line kites and, and uh, what you're seeing here are what we call bridles. And uh, so that, uh, oh, we want to we go back. Well, here's, here's an example of bridles, and, and the function of the bridles is to keep the kite in, in the right attitude towards, towards the wind. But this, this is the flying line. And, and to answer your question, yeah, these, these are all what we call single line kites. So Just what, one kind, of, what kind of material is used for, uh, for the strings? What kind of material is used for the string? Because the wind and the force of the wind and everything can cut it very easily. The kite. Uh, so what kind of material is used making the strings? These days, we, we are mostly using uh, braided nylon. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, one of the strongest and lightest materials these days is Kevlar. Um, in large gatherings, we discourage the use to, of Kevlar because the, the lines are very thin. And if they tangle with another line, uh, the Kevlar line is almost always successful in, in cutting the, the lines. Um, the lines can be very big and very strong. We'll show you an example of that. Um, but we don't we don't have very many line failures these days. Uh, the The lines are modern materials, and and they work quite well. Uh, so, like I say. So some, some folks can uh, do, do some things that are very, very, very inventive. Okay, cellular dimensional kites. It's what your old box kites were, but now we've got uh, different kinds of dimensional kites. And so you see with these spars, uh, the spars, again, mostly being uh, graphite, uh, fiberglass, and very often hollow. Uh, you can have all sorts of shapes from some that are very, very complex. The, the, there are spars inside each of these circles, and you see several bridle lines. 
uh, this was uh, an invention, perhaps you would say, by, by a notable Frenchman. And he owned a plastics factory and was able to make all the connectors for uh, big kites like this. This is about 15 feet across and uh, puts on quite a show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of course, recognize the Washington Monument. This is called a circaflex and it has only one spar and it's, it's a round spar. Uh, but but a lot of lines you can almost see the lines in in the middle there, and and then one line to uh, control the flight. What we call flexible kites. Uh, this is a, a delta kite. If you lay it on the ground, it's flat. But when it's in the air, it becomes three dimensional. Uh, as, as you can see in, in these curves in, at the bottom of the sail. Uh, these are often quite successful kites. They, they fly very well. And soft kites. Soft kites are kites that have no spars at all. Uh, so there, there are no sticks, nothing solid, but these openings at the top of, of this particular kite. Uh, this is, this is a, a, a one of what we call a parafoil family. The air comes in and it stiffens up the shape of the kite and it makes like a wing and an airfoil so that the, uh, the wind going over the top lifts up the kite. Now again, uh, the soft kites are kites that, that will uh, take a variety of forms and you can do a figure kite. This is yeah, kind, of, kind of like an octopus. Um, this, this one has uh, two lines, but it's generally flown on one line. It's flown on two lines here for and ultimate control. Uh, again, a figure kite uh, of, of a soft kite. Uh, you know, as you say, lo lots, lots of different possibilities for design. This is the world's largest kite. That's the Kuwaiti flag. Uh, and it is all soft. There are no spars in it. How big is it? <laughs> wow. Okay, you're standing inside this kite. From People are standing on the, 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 the bottom of the kite and the top of the kite is more than 21 feet above. This, this particular kite is almost 84 feet by 131 feet, and, and that is one quarter of the size of a football field. Mm. It, it, it is just, uh, <laughs> it's monstrous. Um, and the this, kind this, of material is used for making this? Again, this is ripstop nylon oh. for uh, the kite itself. And it took more than 750 hours to build. Uh, it, it flies on a line that has a breaking point of 450 pounds uh, of pressure. Uh, that flying line is, is certainly as big as your wrist, at least. Uh, and it's tied to a dump truck. The dump truck is full. <laughs> and, and so um, it's important to be very, very careful with kites like this. Uh, one of my very good friends was killed in an accident when a uh, kite like this went out of control. 
One of the newest things is what we call zero wind kites. These can be flown indoors. And there's a friend uh, flying at Strathmore at the Music Center uh, in, in 2018 when we did the exhibit there. Uh, all you have to do with these kites is just walk around. And, and that creates what we call a parent wind. Uh, the kite like this is a couple of ounces and, and that's all. So just the motion of walking around can give you enough lift for a kite like that. Um, and, and so again, these are things that can be flown to music. Uh, gymnasium is a really good place to fly. And we don't use any fans or, or any, uh, what you might call artificial wind. It's, it's just the movement of, of the kite flyer. Not as bad as the other day, but not good. Are they done? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear the question. I think there may have been some background noise. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, trains and centipedes are examples of kites that are tied together in a line. Uh, this, this is what we call a kite train. And, and you can see there is a line here running from kite to kite to kite. Again, this kite train is, is flown uh, by a single line. This is a single line kite. Uh, here are what we call centipedes, uh, the, a famous Chinese design with, with many uh, years of, of history involved. Uh, for the base of, of this kite uh, can be very, very uh, decorative. There, there's a lot of styrofoam in here and bamboo. Uh, the eyes go around and uh, it puts on, on quite a show. This is probably 150 to 200 feet long. That's, uh, again, quite a sight. So how I got started? Well, uh, I've done a lot of work with old folks. As the joke goes, uh, now I are one. Um, this is Ansel Tony who started building kites when he was 89 years old. Mm. And this is like a, probably a 12 foot Delta kite, a flexible kite. Ansel made uh, a dozen 12 foot kites a week uh, out of, and used a treadle sewing machine and made his spars out of Indiana basswood and ran a 250 acre farm and took care of his wife who was a semi-invalid <laughs> and uh, several meetings with this wonderful man uh, convinced me that he'd found the fountain of youth and I said oh well I've, I've got a I've got to know more about this. He came as close to a mentor as, as I've ever had. Uh, he lived in farmland, Indiana. I mean, can, can you imagine farmland, Indiana? I mean, how, how wonderfully appropriate. Um, farmland wanted to put up a sign by the highway honoring Ansel. And they put up a sign and the Indiana Department of Transportation made them take it down because they said, we don't have any rules about putting up signs by a community to honor a uh, local resident. Well, guess what? Uh, people got so interested and upset that they convinced the India state legislature to pass a new law that said that people could uh, honor 
their their own citizens. And so this is this is me with the uh, the sign honoring Ansel. And I thought, well, this is a uh, this is such a great idea. And then I started going to festivals and seeing what other people were doing, and uh, particularly interested in in the art uh, that was shown there. Uh, people spending just incredible amounts of time on making stuff that flew and looked beautiful. Uh, you could do lots of things like honor different countries. <laughs> really, uh, <laughs> it's a funny thing to say, but the sky's the limit uh, in your imagination. Uh, you can you can paint, you can sew, you can do lots of different things with kites. You meet really interesting people. <laughs> <laughs> lots of people are interested in kites, uh, and uh, occasionally you meet some very interesting people. <laughs> mm. uh, you uh, of course recognize her. It was lots of fun. Uh, People enjoy uh, being colorful, and that's my sweet wife, Karen, and friends. Uh, people themselves get colorful. <laughs> uh, we get to do lots of things with our, our buddies. We, we all made this kite. Again, this is a, a revolution kite. This is Joe Hedziki, who is head of the revolution company, and and Ben D'Antonio, but uh, each of us made a little piece of, of this type. Uh -huh. We're pretty much lined up. So you can do lots of things together. Uh, again, very inventive friends. Uh, you, you meet people from all over the world, different countries. Excuse me, and how do you so get a kite like that up in the air? A kite like this? Or any of those big gigantic kites. Ah, well, we'll we'll get into that in a minute. But, okay, uh, I'm waiting. <laughs> you're waiting. Yeah, some of the things involve the right place and the right day. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, lots of different pleasures. Kite festivals are astounding, and for for the creativity that it is shown and. And, and just the joy of being there. This is on the beach on a little island in Denmark. And they have one of the world's best uh, kite festivals every year, as long as we're not locked down. Um, this is uh, in uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Here's a uh, scene from Ocean City, Maryland. Uh, again, the kite festivals are absolute photographer's dream. Uh, you see all sorts of things. This is what we call a bowl, actually spelled B-O-L, and it spins. And it needs to be tied down securely. Um, one of these big bowls wanted to take uh, my wife from France to England across the English Channel. Uh, <laughs> until a lot of us sat on her. Um, oh, we don't have any fun at all. Uh, there's lots of, <laughs> lots, of, lots of ways around kites to enjoy each other. And it's a real thrill when you see a kite that you made uh, with another person from another country uh, also having one of them. Takes you wonderful places. This is Hadrian's Wall, which is the farthest northern reach of the Holy Roman Empire. And if you've ever imagined a place with real magic, uh, this is one of them. We, can, we do lots of workshops. Um, the, the old joke is you've never seen so many men with sewing machines. Um, we do competitions. You know, you have to be serious about your competitions uh, be, because kites are judged on flight and beauty and craftsmanship and structural design. So you, you have to get the right judges. We do uh, 
lots of classes, and, and these are what we call sled kites. And uh, if you use Tyvek, it's great for kids to color on with magic markers. You can teach your kids to fly. You can teach your parents to fly. Lots of ways to enjoy kites. So how to fly a kite? Pick a good place. That means no kite eating trees around, uh, no aircraft to get in your way and, and vice versa. Um, a, a good day is a day when the wind is blowing. Every single kite needs wind. Uh, some kites need more wind than others, but uh, sunshine and, and wind, uh, the, the beach is always a, a wonderful place to fly. Um, no storms, no rain, no thunder. Uh, the Russian tried to emulate Ben Franklin and the Russian got fried when uh, his kite line got hit by lightning. Uh, don't run. You can't, uh, can't see where you're going or you can't see the kite if, if you're running. It's, it's not necessary. Uh, get a day with enough wind. With friends and family, it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, way to enjoy life. Adjusting the bridle, the, the lines attached directly to the kite is, a, is one of the really good ways to, to make it fly even a little better. And sometimes uh, you need a tail. If something goes wrong, don't pull on the line, let the line loose. If you pull, the kite will go in the same direction that it's headed. And if it's, if it's headed down, <laughs> you can just make it go faster. <laughs> Some days are better than others. <laughs> but if you're in the right place, you can find somebody with a cherry picker or uh, a ladder and, and they'll help you out. All in all, it's a uh, it's really fantastic way to enjoy life. <laughs> go fly a kite. <laughs> here's some way to get more information uh that's me on top the american kite flyers association uh yeah thinks it's one of the biggest associations in the world uh we just redid the uh, the website and and so there there is a lot of information there, and of course the Maryland Kite Society is is our uh, local organization. So uh, thank you very much. It's it's been a pleasure. Happy to take any questions that you have. This is Kevin. excellent, excellent, and valuable presentation, John. This is Bob. I'm originally from India, so I. As a little child, I used to fly kites. And so my question is, how many countries the kite flying or the kite festivals are held? Because that's the big thing in India that I know of. Uh, the second thing is that when you construct the kites, what kind of aerodynamics engineering or the skills are required? Because that's an, not an easy task to do it. Uh, so if you can just give an answer regarding the, how popular it is this in different parts of the world, the kite flying. I know it's in China, India, and some other countries, but I didn't know about the United States and the kite flying is a big thing, okay? Yeah. India has got a, a fabulous uh, tradition of, of kites. And, and I was honored to be invited there and it, it's uh, quite different yeah. than, than what we see in, in the United States. Uh, in, in India, the, the kites are made out of valuable but inexpensive materials. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're talking about bamboo and, and paper, but I've seen children in India just flying with trash bags. And uh, India is one of the countries that, that has a grand 
tradition uh, in as a sport of, of kite flying. And as you, you may know from the book and movie, Kite Runner, yeah. uh, the tradition is to be the last kite in the sky. And that means your, uh, your uh, objective is to eliminate other kites in the sky uh, by actually Cutting. making your line go very quickly over their line and that will sever their their line. Um, kite fighting is, is an honored tradition in uh, Japan and Korea and Cuba and Afghanistan and I've I've been attacked by Afghanis before at the Washington Monument. And it's it's not a fair fight because uh, our single line kites are are designed to stay up there and make a display and theirs are meant to go around and and to cross lines and cut the other guy and and the uh, I asked yeah, you the question earlier about the strings that are used for kite flying. I still have it. I brought it actually as a huge roll of this. And the, the way they make those strings is it's, it's, an, it's an operation itself. So it is very, very difficult. You know, they're, they're very dangerous also the strings because you can get cut by the strings. Uh, so I, I was really thrilled when this presentation came on. I, that reminded me of my little childhood in you know, about the kite flying. And particularly it's a big in India, it's one of the states in India, Gujarat. Uh, it's just a huge, huge festival, actually. Hey, John. And, and a lot of people die because they go on the top of the house and the kids particularly get excited and they get pulled away by the kites. So there's another problem with the kite flying is people just falling from the buildings. There, there are all sorts of uh, problems, and, and uh, one of them is that some kite fighting in, involve lines that, that have been drawn through yeah. glue and ground glass, yeah. <laughs> and that's generally referred to as manja. And yeah, I have it, that, actually. I have a whole reel of manja. <laughs> <laughs> John, I well, have let's see. When, when we go kite flying, Bob, uh, you can stand way over on the other side. <laughs> but no, uh, you know, some, question, of the, some of the really famous kite flyers have arms with, with all sorts of scars on yeah. them because this flying line is, yeah. has made cuts. And there have been people on bicycles and motorcycles that have been garroted by a line that's fallen down and, but is across the street. Um, yeah, it, it it can be it can be really dangerous. The the Cuban kite flying, the the, the tails of the kites have razors on the end. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. again, a question for you, John. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin has a question for you, John. I have this kite. Yes. This is a uh, a two line kite that I got in uh, the Outer Banks, and yep. It, uh, Kitty Hawk Kite Company, and it's been nothing but trouble. Uh oh. <laughs> the, I, there's enough wind at uh, the Outer Banks to fly it a little bit, but you really need, it, needs, it seems to need like 10 to 15 mile an hour winds to get it going. Uh, a Give 10 mile, dish. yes, a, a 10 mile an hour wind would, would be a minimum of, of that. And yeah, it's uh, kind of like riding a bicycle. You know, okay. you're, you're the one you're looking at is a two line kite, right? And yeah, it, and That's you it. can make really small adjustments, but yeah, yeah. um, th they're lots of fun. <laughs> okay, I'll keep at it. Thanks a lot, so, John. I had a uh, uh, I'm planning to go down to Kitty Hawk uh, at the end of this month with my family, so uh, I know that's where uh, the Wright brothers did some work there because I guess they have a steady wind and uh, I'm wondering what advice you would have if I want to get the kids involved in some kite flying. You know, it depends on the age of the kites. Uh, I, I think teenagers would love the kind of kite that Kevin has 
the, the, the multi-line kites. Uh, you know, younger ones would probably like the, the single line kites and, and Kitty Hawk and, and other stores have, have a huge variety of, of kites. Uh, and they've got people who really know about kites and, and kite flight. But, you know, you're right. The, the Wright brothers were smart guys. Uh, and this, their original designs for the biplane were, were kites. Uh, but in Kitty Hawk, the wind blows all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very steady, a very consistent wind, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, they they do, and sometimes they're very strong. I've I've been there where I couldn't see my feet because the wind was blowing the sand so yeah quickly. All right, so we're at the bottom of the hour. They... Sorry, we're at the bottom of the hour, so if people have to leave, uh, please feel free. Um, but uh, you're welcome to continue to question uh, John. Hey Paul, I think you should Thank get a you. Kite, you get on a kite board when you're in Kitty Hawk. Give that yeah. a try. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think Kitty Hawk would be happy fantastic. to teach you that. <laughs> Good presentation. Thank, Thank you. you very much, John. That Thank you, Ron. Fun. So the secret is that the kite lays on the ground, and when you get a gust of air, you move the lines around to catch the air, and then that takes the kite up. Is that the theory behind it? Well, I tell you, the easiest way to fly a kite is to take a friend with you. Yeah, and, and, and let and them have, run. Have, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a younger person. Okay. Have, have the friend hold the kite, walk away about 50 to 100 feet. And, and if you've got a friend who you can convince to hold the kite up in, instead of down, <laughs> You can just pull it right out of their hands. You know, you feel the wind behind you. Um, and and uh, so the, the, a good kite should, should go up in the air as, as you pull. And then you can let a little line out. It'll glide back down and then pull it up again. Yeah, but that's the way. It, it is easiest uh, to, to have someone hold the kite for you to launch. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You again, John, wonderful presentation. Yeah, I'm going to stop, it, stop recording. Thank you, John. All right. Everybody be well and safe and healthy. <laughs>